This is Leviticus 17 and verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Kal halal Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai Hashem Kadash. The honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. And peace and salutations to the brothers on down, teaching a similar doctrine throughout four corners of the world, pushing and teaching this truth. Also, greetings to the few sisters that tune in to these video epistles. I'll call this lesson the Black Woman Seduced by Bloody Man. Who am I? I was still on the trail of this, this fugitive. And you see, we just read a clue here about who this man might be. He's developing a long rap sheet, as they say, the crimes mounting up. Part of him trying to hide himself from his crimes is to, one of the things he's done is try to get with a black woman, so-called. So then Eve, as we saw in the garden, she's enjoyed some like power and influence for a, at least for a season. It's come at a high price and maybe payback is beginning to be seen right now. Let's go back to Leviticus 17 and read a few more verses here. Because these rules, these laws, statutes and commandments, this fugitive, this bloody man, he functions outside of this. So Leviticus 17, Verse 12, therefore I said unto the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. Verse 14, for it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is, is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of the flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. There's a clear distinction between the rules of living, as we say here, liberty between the children of Israel and everybody else. You see? Let's take a look at another scripture here. Where, where next? Let's go to Ezekiel. Why is this man behaving the way he behaves? Ezekiel 35, let's get straight to the point, 5 and 6. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. Remember, that's his blessing given to him by Isaac in Genesis 27, 40, 41. Israel by the force of his sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord Power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. See, thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. See? <clears throat> this person functions outside of these <clears throat> these rules, excuse me. Let's take another, have another scripture here. Psalms 50, 19 to, 19 to 22. Psalms 50, 
thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Just to be clear who we're speaking about here. Now the dark sayings in these psalms. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. As the Hebrew Israelites were being set in order. Now consider this. Ye that forget the Most High, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. The Most High is getting ready for recompense, vengeance. Where next? Let's go to Hebrews. This man, he's functioning outside. We'll go straight to the point. 12 verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. And we see in Genesis 36, and eight, who is this guy? Esau is Edom. He's bloody in appearance. He loves uncooked meat. He just couldn't wait for the pottage, which was a pot of stew, uncooked meat. I'll have mine rare, please. It's a murderer. Kills for sport. I don't know if they still do it mainly in England, the so-called the family. I don't even want to say what they call themselves. They used to go out with these bloodhounds riding up on horses and they'd find these foxes and they'd rip them to pieces just, just for sport. These people have endless wars millions and millions of dead bodies you see and while they've been trying to seduce the women it's like a form of imitation and some say it's a high form of flattery well others say it is until it isn't because it gets imitation can get very ugly where you're stalking you know, you just want to be that person. Some people attack the person they're trying to be. Actually try to kill them. You see? Actually, there's some people living in our land right now. In Israel. Claiming to be us. Desperately committed all types of genocide. Even at the time of our Savior. Our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. I tried to get rid of him. I believe one of these Herods married into an Israelite family. Trying to do anything to hide their appearance, to hide their identity. You see? But this now is the great reveal. That's what's taking place. Because this man, since 1681 bouncing around the earth with all his weapons it's a bloody man he's being revealed wanting to the world to call him a white man this is not in the scripture the scripture has 18 nations and this man is the nation of Edomites we the Negroes Latinos and Native Americans are Hebrew Israelites, the children of the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, meaning He is. Let's get another scripture here. We're intentionally trying to make this short. Let's go Isaiah 25 and just read a few verses here to finish. 25 verse 7. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up 
death in victory and the Yahweh power will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord Yahweh hath spoken it. Verse 9, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our power. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the Lord, shall the hand of the Lord Yahweh rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. 11. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim. And he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. 12. And the fortress of the high fort of the walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground, even to the dust. So we're seeing that the veil is being removed. And this man has been revealed and is being revealed daily. All this stuff coming out, whether it's on social media or any other old artifacts. It's becoming clear who this man is. He's desperate for people to love him trying to assimilate into everybody else's stuff that even this so-called black woman the Israelite woman throughout the history going all the way back to the garden has been seduced by this bloody man and this bloody man he's about to make an offering he's, he's preparing it, the marketing strategy is in full force. There's an offering that's going to be made worldwide very soon regarding a major prophecy in Revelation 13, 16, 17, 18. And if we discuss it openly, there's a chance our channel can be a strike against you or there's some issue see the truth is what dismantles lies and this bloody man has functioned on the back alongside all his weapons of course he's functioned with deceit lies witchcraft sorcery and that is how he's managed to maintain himself in power but not anymore. The whole thing is unraveling as we speak. But I'm gonna keep this lesson short. If it's the Lord's will, maybe I'll come back and do another lesson. But this lesson has been a black woman seduced by a bloody man. Who am I? Shalom until the next one.